everyone, welcome to Sorting It Out, the show where we break down some of the most viral moments in film and pop culture, and then sort those involved into their Hogwarts houses. Hi, I'm Janine, and I'm a decades-long Harry Potter superfan and proud Gryffindor. And in this show, I take my mutual loves for both the wizarding world and pop culture to, you guessed it, sort it out. But before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you get notified every time a new episode drops here on Film Pop. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this episode's topic. We are going to be talking about the epic moment that was the meeting of the three cinematic Spider-Men, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland. And man, oh man, was it a satisfying moment for MCU fans. So let's get started by talking about why is Spider-Man such a big deal? It's a really great question. Spider-Man has been around for a really long time. The first Marvel comic which featured Spider-Man as a character was Amazing Fantasy number 15, which came out in 1962, so over 60 years ago. And the description of that comic read, when young Peter Parker gains remarkable abilities from a radioactive spider, he must step up and try to become a hero, while also dealing with the fantastic pressures of an everyday teenager. For with great power, there must also come great responsibility. And Spider-Man, aka Peter Parker, as he's known to most of the world, takes this mantra and applies it to his mission as Spider-Man because he realizes that he's been given a gift and he needs to use that gift to protect and help others. Spider-Man quickly became and remains to this day a beloved superhero, especially in the Marvel franchise. Some would even say he's one of the top or their favorites, namely in part thanks to his absolute relatability. Peter Parker wasn't a billionaire or an awarded scientist or really a warrior of any kind. He was a totally normal teenage boy living in Queens. Sure, he was pretty smart. Some might even say he was on the nerdy side, but he was basically average besides those things. That was, of course, until he got bit by that radioactive spider, which we now know is his origin story as a superhero. And you might be wondering, what are Spider-Man's powers anyway? He got bit by a spider, but what does that mean? Let me tell you. He has superhuman strength, superhuman speed, superhuman durability, and a natural gift to self-heal. Plus he has his infamous Spidey sense or Peter Tingle as they like to joke about it in the most recent movies, um, which is his ability to both sense and react to danger before it happens, which is really cool. But you know, Peter Parker or Spider-Man as a character is not perfect. He makes mistakes. He's constantly juggling his superhero duties alongside his real life responsibilities because he's masking his identity as a superhero for the most part. He's often been seen as the one that could be any of us. Any of us could be Spider-Man. You might be wondering, okay, well, why was Spider-Man such a big deal a few months ago? If you saw the movie, you know. Um, the third installment of the MCU Spider-Man movies entitled No Way Home came out and fans who'd been following kind of the MCU timeline for a while knew that this Spider-Man movie would basically be picking right back up from where the last one ended. And that one came out in 2019, so it had been over two years. But we knew that it was gonna pick up right from the way that that one ended, in which his identity was revealed to the world as Peter Parker from his villain in that movie, Mysterio. So when the third movie came out, people were really excited to see what was going to happen. And it actually ended up becoming one of the highest grossing MCU films to date. More on that in just a little bit. First, I wanna go ahead and really quickly break down the last 20 years of cinematic Spider-Man history, starting with the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. The first live action Spider-Man swung into theaters in 2002, starring Tobey Maguire. This three movie arc was an amazing cinematic introduction to so many people's favorite superhero. He was already loved by so many, but people also loved for the most part, this depiction of Spider-Man played by Toby. Generally, fan consensus was pretty good is what I'm trying to say. People were pretty happy with this rendition. It was pretty comic accurate, minus the fact that some argued that Toby looked a little bit too old to be playing a high schooler, but they thought, like I said, it was a comic accurate depiction of Peter Parker, enough that three movies ended up being made. Spider-Man in 2002, Spider-Man 2 in 2004, and Spider-Man 3 in 2007. Then just a few years 
years later, in 2012, we were introduced to another version of Spider-Man, this time played by Andrew Garfield. A moment of silence. We love Andrew Garfield. What a handsome, handsome man. Anyway, I digress. This new cinematic introduction to Spider-Man was titled The Amazing Spider-Man. Some fans were a little confused as to why another version was coming out so quickly after the last one. You'll have to take that up with Sony. I think a lot of people still don't fully understand. However, this origin story, because it was a different Spider-Man. There was no like it's in the same world or anything like that. It was totally different. And this introduction felt slightly off-putting to some. Like I said, Andrew's version was quirky for sure, definitely nerdy, but he was also like kind of cool. Like he was a skateboarder. He had really quick wit. He like kind of almost immediately got the girl, so to speak. So some people were like, this guy is not nerdy, awkward, normal Peter Parker. He was kind of a cooler, hipper version, but I digress. His nerdiness was definitely on full display when it came to all things science, much like his father. Hence why Peter snuck into the Oscorp building, the place where his father used to work, to kind of find out what kind of projects he was working on before he died. And that's actually, of course, where he was bitten by a radioactive spider. And unlike Toby's Peter, in which this kind of grossed out fans, but Toby's version organically shot webs like out of his skin versus both Andrew and Tom's versions had to kind of create and concoct and use science to create their web stuff. So again, Andrew's version of Spider-Man, his nerdiness was on full display when it came to all things science. <laughs> anyway, Andrew starred in two amazing Spider-Man films that came out in both 2012 and 2014, the latter of which was not a fan favorite. It had a really messy ending, which did kind of leave things open for another movie, but we never got one with Andrew Garfield. But that's okay, let's move on to Tom Holland, our third Spider-Man. Actually, before we do that, I wanna give you a quick PSA. Something that's really important to know when it comes to Spider-Man in the movies especially, is that Spider-Man's properties as a character for a very long time have been owned by Sony, which meant that Spider-Man was never really able to be a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe or the MCU because of legal reasons. It frustrated a lot of fans for a really long time because they really wanted to see one of their favorite superheroes, their friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, show up in the MCU to fight alongside the Avengers. But that never was really realized because of legal reasons. That was until Tom Holland entered the scene. When Captain America's Civil War came out just two years after the last Amazing Spider-Man movie, so many fans were both so surprised and simultaneously so satisfied to see a familiar face swing on to the big screen. As part of Tony Stark or Iron Man's crew in the war, this introduction of Spider-Man into the MCU was a huge win for both Marvel and Marvel fans. It also introduced another actor, like I mentioned, as the titular role of Spider-Man, and that was Tom Holland. Not only does Tom really look the part of Spider-Man, he's young. He was 19 when they shot Civil War, maybe even when it came out. So he was a teenager, an actual teenager. But his love for the character is really what shown through his performance. You could tell he loved Spider-Man as much as we love Spider-Man, which is so cool to see. From there, Tom's version of Spider-Man was given three solo features, Spider-Man Homecoming in 2017, Spider-Man Far From Home in 2019, and Spider-Man No Way Home in 2021. Plus he showed up in both Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, solidifying this version of Spider-Man as an MCU staple. While there are certainly debates amongst fans over which actor or which version of Spider-Man is superior, the truth is that all three brought something totally different to the character, which is a really fun thing to get to watch as a fan, especially since Spider-Man, namely in the comics, has a lot of storylines about something called the multiverse and the idea that there are different types and versions of Spider-Man all across different timelines and universes. Speaking of, fans of the MCU have pretty much always hoped slash conspired that these three actors would 
somehow, these three versions of Spider-Man would somehow come together, but like, there, no, how would it happen, right? There was no prediction of how they could make that happen in a way that would actually honor those different versions of each character. But as Spider-Man No Way Home's release started getting closer and closer late last year, many fans began speculating that this would be the moment, especially once we started seeing some familiar villains show up in the trailers. First, we saw Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2 and the Green Goblin from Spider-Man 1. Eventually, we saw Electro from the amazing Spider-Man 2. So we knew if the villains were coming into the new movie, the different Spider-Mans could too. So yeah, people were speculating, conspiring. There were lots of online videos. It was a really fun time to be a Spider-Man fan and be a Marvel fan. And you guys, was the payoff ever worth it? Not only did they show up through a rift in the multiverse, but the three Spider-Men had to come together to battle all of the villains from the past movies as a team. And the best part was that they were all at different ages and stages of being Spider-Man. Toby was the older, wiser, more sage version of Spider-Man. Andrew was seemingly coming off of his last movie, he was in a really dark place and even mentioned in No Way Home that he had stopped holding his punches. You could tell he was working through some stuff. And then Tom's version, he was dealing with anger and guilt and a very, very recent loss. And it turns out he needed his multiverse doppelgangers to help him through that moment in his life. It was amazing. Um, and as someone who was sitting in a fully packed theater the night that it came out, it was so, so much fun to see and hear fans reactions in real time. My words can't do it justice. It was so cool. So when it comes to what might be next for Spider-Man, the truth is no one apart from maybe Kevin Feige and the powers that be at Marvel really know what could come next. From what we know, Tom Holland signed onto a three movie deal. So No Way Home was that third movie. Um, however, at the end of that movie, fans were teased that there might be some other famous villains from the Spider-Man universe coming into the MCU, which is very cool, but also kind of confusing. The multiverse in general is confusing, so I won't try to totally explain it to you, but there's always a chance, of course, that Tom Holland could sign on for some more movies, bearing in mind, of course, that Sony and Marvel are gonna have to come to yet another agreement, but we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens. I, for one, am rooting for a couple more movies. <laughs> Now that we're all up to speed on the last 20 years of cinematic history when it comes to Spider-Man, I think it's time to give you what you came for. Let's sort it out. So first, let's start with the character of Spider-Man with Peter Parker. I think that if he were sorted into a Hogwarts house, he would probably be a Gryffindor. I have debated this one. I'm like, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, could be a little both, maybe a little Grifflepuff. I don't know. But if I had to pick one, I would say Gryffindor with maybe a little bit of a Slytherin edge. He clearly feels a responsibility to take care of and protect other people, as well as having a pretty strong moral code. I think he often knows what is right versus what is wrong. That's kind of a thing he grapples with a lot as a character. But a big storyline in the comics and in the movies really is that he occasionally struggles with kind of giving into slash moving past his dark side, which we all have dark sides, no matter who you are, what house you're in. But I think, yeah, he might be a Gryffindor with a little bit of Slytherin edge as a character. But let's talk about the actors. Let's start with the first Spider-Man we were introduced to, to, Tobey Maguire. Tobey is probably the most mysterious of the trio of actors because while he starred in a lot of movies between the 90s and the mid-aughts, he's mostly kept his life pretty private. Like I said, a little bit mysterious. He's stayed out of the spotlight for quite some time, at least the last like 10-ish years. But based on his career and the roles that he's chosen alongside Spider-Man, starring in movies like Seabiscuit, Pleasantville, Brothers, and The Great Gatsby, I think you can really see his creativity, his individuality. They're really on display in the characters that he plays in different movies, which are both traits that are often found in Ravenclaw's. At the same time, I think his disconnection from Hollywood, as well as kind of his isolation from the outside world, or maybe that disconnection can be seen as isolation from the outside world, those are also often traits of Ravenclaws. Though to be fair, I can totally understand the desire to kind of want to distance yourself and your family from the world of celebrity. But all in all, I think Toby would be an amazing Ravenclaw. Okay, let's talk about Andrew Garfield. Honestly, there's so much I could say. Love the man. He seems wonderful. I think he comes across as just a really genuinely nice guy. He seems really chill as well as pretty private. He often keeps his personal life kind of tucked away 
from the spotlight and the flashing cameras of Hollywood. His dedication though to his roles, which he's actually been known to say that he often approaches his characters as if they are real living people, which some might say is a form of method acting. It's definitely dedication to the craft. It's often apparent too from the screen when you watch him in different movies and shows, he is a dedicated actor. He gives his all in his performances. And I think too, his humility often really shines through, whether he's on a red carpet or doing press interviews, anything like that, he comes across as a very humble dude. And I think in a lot of ways, to be totally honest, he reminds me of Cedric Diggory. So is it really any wonder that I think Andrew would be in Hufflepuff? Humble, brave, a desire to help others. I mean, just look back at these paparazzi photos from when he and Emma Stone were dating and they used that opportunity to shine a light on charities that needed more attention. They thought that they did in that moment. I'm sorry, Andrew just gives off such amazing Hufflepuff vibes. So let's roll with Hufflepuff. All right, and last but not least, our most recent web slinging actor, Tom Holland. So first things first, I think I need to mention that Tom Holland has always been an outspoken Spider-Man fan, which is so fun to see. He even mentioned back in 2013 on a red carpet interview that he would love to someday get to play Spider-Man. Talk about manifesting, right? <laughs> Using his love for the character, as well as his talents as a very skilled gymnast, Tom was able to land the role, not to mention later down the line, use his voice to get Sony and Marvel to come to an agreement after a messy divorce of sorts. There was a battle over, once again, the legal rights and properties of Spider-Man, which actually put into jeopardy the third Spider-Man movie starring Tom, and he was able to use his voice to get them to come to an agreement which solidified that third installment of his films and hopefully, possibly, let's cross our fingers, some future films as well within the MCU. He's also used his platform and his influence for good, establishing a trust with his family called the Brothers Trust, which aims to help different charities around the world. So taking all these things into consideration, I think the Sorting Hat would most likely put Tom into Gryffindor. With his traits of courage, chivalry, having a pretty strong moral compass, it kind of just makes sense, right? And I feel like he's got a bit of recklessness in him too, like just a little edge of recklessness, which is also a Gryffindor trait. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Gryffindor for Tom. All right, you guys, my magical and muggle friends alike, this has been so much fun. And that is it for this episode of Sorting It Out. Let me know in the comments below what you think about how we sorted Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland, and of course, the character himself, Spider-Man, AKA Peter Parker. Let us know in the comments what you think, how you would sort them. And of course, be sure to hit that notification button and subscribe to Film Pop so that you get notified when the next episode of Sorting It Out drops. And remember, with with great power comes great responsibility. So use it well. See ya.